In this video I'm going to show you how I turn some horrible old flooring off cuts into a War Games modular road system. Hello everybody, this is going to be a terrain video, my first terrain video. Everybody loves a terrain video, don't they? Why are they so popular? I don't know. I mean, I think it's because once you've spent all this time buying loads of little men, buying loads of paint, then you need some terrain to game on. And <laughs> if you've already splashed loads of money, you probably don't want to spend a load of time and money uh, or a load of your hard-earned cash on a load of terrain. You just want to play, don't you? And it's a secondary thing for a lot of people, although it's still important to a lot of people. They probably don't want to invest quite as much in it as they do in, in the little men themselves. So if they can find a good way of getting good terrain built cheaply and quickly and easily, then they're going to go for it. Uh, and I've started doing it, uh, bearing in mind I'm three years into the hobby. I probably started building terrain about one year in, so I suppose I didn't hang around too much before I started getting into it. Uh, but this is about roads. Uh, I'm going to show you how I'm doing roads. There are many, many, many clever ways of doing roads. There are definitely cleverer ways of doing this. Now, um, this is one tactic and you might just like this because of the way the road looks. I'm quite happy with the way it looks and I'll show you it properly in a minute. And this is what I'm gonna show you how to make. So we've got some dudes on the roadway there, just to uh, show you the scale of it. So it's, it's wide enough, one section of it is wide enough to get four mounted dudes uh, abreast on it. And you can get, uh, I think you could get a unit of six, I think shoulder to shoulder on it uh, and I'm doing it in these uh, simple sort of modular strips so I'll be able to move it around um, and reposition it on my tabletop as I wish I've got enough to cover the length and breadth of my table so to do a crossroads type thing if I want to uh, and I'm doing a sort of so I've ended up with I think it's about um, 10 different sections of different sizes and a crossroads that is going to be when it's finished just going to show you how I'm doing one section at the moment. So this is your finished section. Um, and I'll take you through the ingredients to create this and I'll put some nicer pictures up of this thing as well. So you can look at the, the final effect of what this looks like and eventually I'm going to have it on the table for you as well. So, what do you need? Uh, this is quick, by the way. This is, I mean, one thing about this is I've been impressed by this. Uh, having made it up from scratch, I've been pleased with how fast it is and how cheap it is. Uh, because a lot of this stuff, and maybe you will too, um, I had just lying around my house. Uh, this is my garage, by the way. When I moved in here, I was very excited to have a garage with a workbench in it. Uh, the first five years we lived in this house, I filled this garage full of junk. And I've only just cleared it out <laughs> to the point where I can actually get on this desk and do stuff with it. So hence we're now in a terrain fest, because I've now got the space and finally sorted it out. Um, so, what do you need? Let's keep these on the way. Um, the base of this is some old flooring. It's unused. It's a big box of offcuts. I'll show you the box of offcuts. There they are that I've been digging into. Um, it's relatively cheap. This is from the Designer Force Collection Galleria style, in case you're that keen to get the same thing. Um, and it's just a box that uh, was left here by some carpet fitting men when we moved in and they redid our uh, dining room floor and they left the, the off cuts and as you can see it's this kind of like imitation wood flooring that when you put it down it looks a bit like the floor is made out of wood uh, and it's in reality it's just lying over the backing on it look. Um, I assumed this would be um, poor at best <laughs> to base anything on it turns out to be brilliant uh, why? Because this stuff cuts up really well. Um, and then when I get this on the tripod in a minute, I'll, I'll show you how well it cuts up. It cuts up really easily. Yeah, it's very durable. Um, it takes paint and stuff you want to glue to it really well, surprisingly. Uh, and this back edge is quite handy because it's not too slippery. So if you're going to put it down on a table, it won't move around much, you know, it's not going to slide around on the, if you put it on a smooth surface, for example. And if you put it on a, a sort of smooth grass mat surface, it's not going to shift about too much. 
Uh, so it's got many advantages. And it's working really well for me at the moment. I'm really pleased with it as a discovery. I, I assumed it would be useless, but it, it's not. It, it's great. So what I've done up to this point is I've cut out, so you can see the stages of it here. So it starts out like this. Once you've cut out your section that you want, cut it into sections, and then I'm applying some texture, uh, some verges, and some sort of bumps and lumps in the road with good old fashioned filler. Other brands are available. I know this is probably along the more expensive line. It's not a very big tub either. I've got through that pretty fast doing this. But I use this because this was just sitting in the garage with no purpose. It's been here since pretty much since we moved in. So I just use that up first. And then I'll switch to a cheaper brand because there are many cheaper brands. Um, which you can pick up a big fat tub of this stuff. For, you know, even this isn't the cheapest you can get for about four quid. And that'll last you for ages. Um, I'm then painting. So this is going to the ingredients again, sorry. So filler, bog standard, matte, household, brown, paint. The cheapest you can get your hands on. This is from B&Q. It was about six, seven quid for this massive tub, which is way more than I'll need. Uh, we've got some filthy cheap PVA. It was the cheapest PVA I get my hands on. Uh, it's working fine at the moment, by the way. Uh, we've got a shaker. This is um, <laughs> something I've nicked off one of my kids. <laughs> they haven't noticed yet, but it's a cleaning powder shaker, uh, a toy one for if uh, a kid wants to pretend to be cleaning the house. Unsurprisingly, they don't really use it. <laughs> Messy as my kids are, but I filled it full of static grass. So it's my static, it's now become my static grass shaker. There you go. So I've got a static grass shaker I'm using up my big tub of static grass. And I've got some tufts too, just to liven it up a bit. Uh, that's your basic ingredients. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the camera on the tripod and I'll show you how well this stuff cuts up and show you how to cut it. It's so easy. See you in a sec. Okay, so I just wanted to cut one piece of this just to show you um, how easy it is because I've cut everything I need to be honest already before I started having bright and I had the bright idea of doing this video. Um, but I just wanted to show you how it's done, just how simple it is because I was a bit scared of it. I thought it'd be difficult. I thought it would be sort of unforgiving and I'd make those mistakes and mess it up but it's so easy so simple as get yourself your bog standard Stanley style craft knife measure out your bit that you want to do and you don't need to try and cut all the way through it this is what I discovered very quickly it's it's well designed for well being flawed quickly I suppose and put down quickly so you measure your piece and look how it comes apart so you you just give it a good deep score using a fair bit of pressure but I'm not trying to cut all the way through it you don't need to because watch what happens once you've scored it bah like that simple as uh, and it just comes apart so I just wanted to show you how easy it is uh, and once you've got that you've got your sections done what I've been doing is putting some texture on the roads uh, random section of the road because when I've seen some roads I think the thing that annoys me I mean everybody's got everybody has their sort of preferences when it comes to terrain don't they what they think is realistic and acceptable and is decent and people there differ a lot with what they think is okay I mean I'm I want something that looks like medieval tracks that's just you're talking like you know a dirt a, a a glorified dirt path basically is what we're talking about here which only horse cart and foot has has sort of um trodden on uh, and it's in many cases it's probably not going to be trodden on that often so it doesn't need to be some sort of super highway this is probably even a little bit too defined to be honest um so one thing about that is and i'll put some pictures up like i said um if you walk along any track in the countryside, you know, many of them haven't changed for hundreds of years and um, they're very bumpy. Uh, so obviously, and, and that's not what this is, it's very flat. So, and the, the sort of, this sort of wooden texture is nowhere near uh, representative of a, a knackered 
well-worn higgledy-pickledy uh, dirt track. So that's why I smooth on these big chunky bits of filler. Because when I paint it in a sec, you'll see that it, it creates a, a more realistic sort of pattern. Uh, and then you got the verges. I mean, I put verges on because, uh, I mean, this, this grass will sort of match with my gaming mat, which I've designed. Uh, and I just wanted something that looked a bit, that, that helps to make the, the line of the road a bit uneven. This is probably the neatest I'm going to go. Because although, you know, I'm not going to do loads of random curves and stuff to make it too curly-whirly. I don't want it to be like a, a dirt built road as such. Many roads that were well used, even in the Middle Ages, were ex Roman roads, of course, and they would be fairly straight. But you see how I've sort of bent it in a little bit in places and made it a bit sort of way at the edges. I don't, this is a bit too even for me. So this is probably the most even I'll get, and I'll have lots of cut ins and stuff, you know, where the grass has grown in or the tracks uneven to make it look a bit more realistic. So that's that. Uh, so that's that done. And as you can see, I've built up a nice mucky verge, both sides, pattern in the middle, uh, and the verge obviously sort of like intrudes onto the road a fair bit as well to try and make it more realistic. Uh, I can't show you me doing this because I've done it all and I've used up most of my filler, but you can see what I've done. <laughs> and I've literally taken a, a wedge at a time on the tops of my fingers, and I've smoothed and squished it down. It squishes down and sticks on fairly straightforward um, and then you just leave it to dry overnight and then it, it looks like that in the morning which looks horrendous but it's it's got the pattern that you need um, I immediately thought that if I that when I bend this that this was all gonna crack off and flake off it doesn't uh, I don't know why there's obviously some flexibility to ooh, there's a little bit crack there look, but there's obviously some flexibility to this filler um, there's something built into it that means that it doesn't just immediately come apart because these this flooring is fairly flexible which is a blessing and a curse in some ways but it doesn't no it doesn't just crack off when you bend when it bends uh, it's fine if anybody can explain to me why it's not coming to pieces then <laughs> please do down in the comments but it, it doesn't come off when I do that uh, no I haven't put any PVA in that I should have done I'm an idiot <laughs> I should have mixed PVA into that filler. Uh, I haven't, and I wish I had done now because it's probably even more robust. Uh, but it's not coming off, so that's good. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is uh, paint a section. I'll show you how to paint a section. So I'll see you in a sec when I get the paint ready. Okay, back to the paint then. Bog standard brush, wholesale brush from, I think it's from Boys, something like that. Um, two quid for four I think it was mad uh, but yeah you just need a box standard household brush um, this stuff as you can see you get a walking rate tub of it it's meant to paint the inside of your house it's fine for this um, this is I mean it's surprisingly difficult how hard it is to get an earthy brown household colour because funnily enough people don't want to paint the inside of their house dark brown um, can't think why, but um, this is a, if you're looking for this, this is a B and Q own brand type cheapo paint. I don't know how much it was again. I think it was about six or seven quid for this whacking great tub, which is going to last me ages. Um, so, like so, you know, <laughs> I don't really need to show you this bit, but I will. So you just get it on and, you know, the, the only thing I'd, I've learned from this is I did try and use a smaller brush to begin with. I don't know why. I thought I was being clever and arty. I was just wasting my time. So, um, you know, just make sure that you use a big brush because then the quicker you're going to get it done. And you can see I was just slapping it on. There's no, there's no great uh, secret to this. I'm just doing it so you've seen it done, so you can see it come together in stages, really. I'll let this dry and come back and we'll move to the next stage. There we go. I just thought I'd show you what it looks like at this stage all laid out on the floor uh, next to that completed section there. So this is the whole lot. This is gonna cover um, a table that's uh, six by five. So 
you can see it doesn't take too many pieces and it's not too time consuming so I'm just gonna leave that to dry now uh, come back and finish it in a sec okay so they're all dry now um, one of the little painting thing I'm gonna do is and this is optional you don't have to do this It'd be fine without but I like to uh, undercoat the verges just in green uh, it just gives a little lift to the grass just makes it slightly easier um, and I quite like, for some reason, you know, I quite like painting the edges of stuff green. Uh, don't know why, if you look on all the bases that I do, I tend to um, put a reasonably bright green around the the edge of them, around the base edges, the bare base edges, which is just a, an old habit I've had. Uh, which I think comes from looking at old photos of old Games Workshop um, miniatures and seeing that, you know, where you have like a, quite a nice, base texture but then you have like the sort of like bare green base sides like the edges of the base they're always like a neat but bare green don't know why I just quite like that um, with um, green again it's difficult to get household paint that is a, a sort of deep grass green uh, this is a little bit too bright if I'm honest um, but it'll, it'll do the job and it was dead cheap again or cheapish this is actually a sample, a sort of glorified sample part of one particular colour. And yeah, like I said, all I'm going to do is just go on the edges. So I'll come back in a sec once I've done through that, and they're dry. Okay, so that's dry. Um, and now we're at that stage where I've discovered every terrain project gets to. You get halfway through and you think, oh my god, that looks horrendous. <laughs> Uh, as you can see at the minute it looks not great uh, but as I've also discovered uh, stuff only tends to start looking decent when you start putting some detail on it uh, so don't be afraid if you get halfway through a project and you hate it that seems to be pretty standard for most terrain um, so yeah we're going to do the fun the slightly more fun bit now anyway so at this point I will now put on some tufts I've got two different types of tufts um, they, these are cheap ones uh, ish uh, you don't need to use two different types of tufts I'm just doing this because I've got some sort of arid tufts that I sort of need to use up that I don't really like for basing, for miniature basing uh, and this is just to break it up um, so I've sort of discovered that well one of the keys to terrain is uh, to treat it a little bit like how you treat colouring miniatures in that uh, a bit like when you're trying to paint someone's shirt or you know um, like say you're trying to paint um, a tunic blue uh, you wouldn't just use one kind of blue paint you'd use a light blue a dark blue a base coat you know like maybe a different color uh, same applies to terrain basically I've discovered uh, you know grass is not just green weeds are not just green earth is not just brown so if you chuck some variation in suddenly I found that you know that variation starts looking more natural uh, and suddenly stuff looks st suddenly starts to look a little bit more believable uh, if you chuck some variation in. So I'm just going to chuck these on at random. Just these are representing, you know, that they're wild verges. Uh, so that's that. Then using our filthy cheap PVA, um, this has got like a little applicator on it, so I am going to use that. And uh, just go along the length of each verge, nice and quick. There we go. And then we will return to our paintbrush. And we will just make sure we've got a good coating of PVA on the verges. You can just sprinkle like a chef adding pepper to a Michelin star dish if you want. Uh, I decided to take up an, one of these shakers because it just helps me to stop wasting quite so much. And then yeah, you just have a good tap along the length of your verge. 
and I'm going to speed this up at this point because you don't need to see me doing this for the next five minutes. So I'm going to leave that to dry for a little bit uh, and then come back. Right, so we've let that grass dry, we've shaken off the excess, I put it back in the canister. And now we're sort of into the final stages of this. So as you can see, it's starting to look a little bit less offensive. <laughs> it's starting to look a bit more like a piece of terrain. Uh, static grass and something does do wonders if it's a decent static grass as well. Right, uh, next job. Uh, do it on the road. So this again is using a super cheap PVA. Last physical ingredient we're going to put on is um, a mud mix, which is uh, just a homemade belter. Uh, it's literally just some earth out of um, the garden <laughs> that I've ground up into a finer mix, baked in the oven, and use it as a as a kind of earth scatter, I suppose, like an earth uh, surface. Uh, I don't use sand because uh, I don't like it. It's, I just think it's too uniform. Uh, it's rarely properly to scale. I can't be bother faffing about trying to find the right sand. It's much easier to walk out into nature, into your back garden, find some very fine clay earth that's the right scale, grind it up and away you go. I'm not going to bother using a shaker for this. Um, I just scatter on. And that's that. Uh, just make sure I've got everything I need. Fill out the gaps. And on this, I am gonna knock the excess off now. Which is gonna make a right mess. But I'll show you why in a sec. That going too mad. Get the excess off now, and I'll show you why. So you can see our sort of road surface there, hopefully, and that we've got the lumps and bumps I was talking about. Was all important sort of natural lumps and bumps, and you can see that now this does look like a dirt track now. I've um, kind of made sure we're nice and uneven on the edges, which I like. Uh, and the reason I'm not going to let this dry is because there's one other thing that I do uh, just to make it that little bit more cut up and horrible uh, is before it dries just poke some random horrible little holes in it uh, because if you look at a dirt track like any sort of like useless road surface or sort of like deteriorating road surface uh, it's often got sort of ruts in it where weather and usage has created sort of like horrible patches where like puff, I suppose it's all like puddles in the earth kind of thing. You see this a lot on like farm tracks and stuff because you're still going to get potholes in those sort of like compacted earth surface and like breaks in it and uneven patches. So before glue dries, I'm just using a finger to poke some simple little gaps in it really. There we go. Again I'll take some decent pictures of it at this stage. Um, well on the way. Now what I'm going to do is let it dry and come back in with a bit of paint, a little dry brush on the top for a final touch. So after we dry, uh, one last finishing touch, which is going to be uh, a dry brush on the top of the mud with a little, uh, this is an acrylic, it's an ochre, uh, one of the sort of cheap, cheaper, bigger bottles of acrylic paint, artist paint, artist acrylic, uh, just doing a little dry brush on top. 
which is just to bring out the the detail and make it look a little bit more uh, 3D. So I'm gonna use this utterly knackered up bit of cardboard now just to get the brush nice and dry and then just start going over the top like that. Just to bring it up a bit. Uh, I think in ideal world, I'd probably wait and do a third line to dry brush on top of this. But it's how much time do you want to spend, you know. Um, this is okay. I think I'm just going to be a slightly wetter dry brush, if that makes sense, just to get it going. Oh, that's too much. <laughs> And we're done. Um, if it looks a little bit patchy in places, it's because it's still actually drying. Um, I'm very happy with that for the sake of some using some old stuff that was lying over there in the garage into uh, some roads which I thought, well, I could find some similar stuff online but and pay for it, but I'm probably looking at the fat end of 50, 60 quid. And I probably wouldn't be as happy with it as I am with this. So, yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. It took very little time. Uh, I reckon not including drying time that's probably taken me uh i split it up over days but that's probably taken me no more than four hours to do that lot uh and it's it's on my homemade gaming mat at the moment just to show you sort of how the crossroads and stuff will will work out so obviously you just take things apart and i can go all the way across if i want to uh, i've got a t-junction that fits in like that uh we've got a couple of different size sections to not go all the way over if we want to and just change the distance things like that it's all measured out trust me <laughs> uh so yeah thanks very much for watching that uh that was quite fun if you know a better system of making cheap easy quick roads uh undoubtedly there are people that do um let me know put something down in the comments tell me a bit about how you've done roads if you found something lying around your house uh but yeah thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you can while I'm trying to get this thing going. Uh, and I'll see you next time.